Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Divine Journey. So, since last episode, I was doing a bit of finalizing work um, for the world download, because today is episode 50, which is the world download. Um, and, as you can tell right here, I've been working on bridges a lot. Eh, quite a bit of work on bridges. Um, not finished. I've got these here. I've got to decide what kind of block I want here. I was thinking about going with maybe just like a black Tyrion, like what I've used here and here, but um, and up there and everything. But I don't know for sure. I'm still kind of debating on that, so I've left that as just carpenter's blocks for the time being. Um, but I kind of want to start adding that depth feel. Um, you'll notice on the insides, I've brought this through kind of as supports and... Um, Kind of have some stuff that's a little bit different on the inside, like this here. Um, but I love the way this looks. Like, if you go down in here, and you look down through the bridge, of course, right through here, right on that section, there's not anything yet. But um, it feels like the bridge, to me, it's like a real bridge. You know, it's got supports running through the middle. Um, it's got a foundation, you know, that's being built to support everything. Um, and I love, I love the way this looks. Like, if you're looking down... Um, you can see the bottom, I've done some work there. Not done yet um, entirely, but things are coming along pretty well. Um, I've also done some work on the supports, bringing this um, this intersection down and, and whatnot. So a lot of my time was spent there, and you can see I added two more sections over here. Um, this one has all the interior supports. Um, well, not this middle one. I haven't done the middle one yet, because I actually just added that not too long ago, but... Um, this one, I haven't done any of the interior supports yet, but it's it's coming along. These actually take a little while, um, and uh, and plus, I'm actually kind of designing them as I as I do them. Um, and then right through here, I've done um, inverted uh, Ender I.O. lights down through there, just to kind of light it up at night. Um, we'll swing by here once the sun sets so you can see it. Um, assuming I remember to swing by here once the sun sets, but... Depends on how wrapped up we get in stuff. But it kind of lights stuff up. It makes the, the bridge really pop at night, um, which is nice. And then, um, yeah, just kind of bringing this all together and giving it some kind of depth and whatnot. So I think this bridge is going to be pretty cool once it's done. So anyways, um, I worked on that. And then I also worked on this quite a bit. I've got this fed up quite a bit. Um, I've actually got nodes over here. Well... I'm not wearing the right armor for that, but um, if we take a look, um, well, you're not going to be able to see it all, but there's a lot of stuff in here. There's over 100 air in here now. Um, I've been getting a lot of air nodes, and there's a lot of other stuff. I grabbed nodes from the nether and whatnot, trying to put more ignis into it. Ignis is at 57. Ignis was the one thing I was really struggling with, and you can see I got like Ira and um, the greed one. I can't remember what it's called. I got quite a bit of gluttony and whatnot. I've got a bunch, like, let me go grab my armor real quick, because it actually displays quite a bit better if you have this armor on. So let's see, you can see like a list, and it's it's quite a big list as you put stuff into this, there you go. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in this right now, um, quite a bit of Spiritus, I've been coming across quite a bit of that, um, yeah, there's just a ton of different stuff, and we've got there's more Spiritus. Ordo and Ignis, that came from the Nether. Aqua and Spiritus actually came from over there. Um, that one came from, I think it was right over there. It's like a little forest. This one's actually a fading node. I think that's fading, right? Yeah, that one's Gula and Ordo. I think that one came from the Nether as well. But yeah, I've been, I've been getting quite a... I've been trying to do a variety, trying to get certain things up. Because I was feeding just nodes nearby into it. And then, next thing I know, the air was like crazy high and everything else was like kind of straggling behind. So I started feeding some other things in there. Um, I will say that in some instances, I added more than our eight nodes. Um, I added nodes like directly around this. Not a lot because it took so long to go out and get a bunch of them. That I only did it on occasion when I was like, okay, I want to boost this node up a bit. Um, but if you, the, you know, the closer you put the nodes to this... The faster that it's going to feed off of them, the faster it's going to register them and pull um, Essentia from it. But you end up wasting a lot of the node because other nodes feed off of it. But it does speed up the process. Um, if, you know, with a system like what we've got where moving nodes over is really easy, um, it's not a major issue. It's just, once again, it's time consuming because you have to fly out and go grab the node and then um, 
you know, click it into place, then come back and move the stuff, and then go back out and get under the node, click it into place, and rinse and repeat over and over again. So I think the most I ever had around it was maybe like three or four um, feeding that in there. But I did leave this running uh, for quite a few days. <laughs> I left this pack running like if I was asleep or I was doing something. Um, I did go do a little bit of Christmas shopping um, over the past couple days, some with my girlfriend, some without, you know, picking, finishing up stuff for her and everything. And uh, I left it running through all of that and and whatnot. I know I've, I've been, my days have become a little bit more busy with Christmas, Christmas rolling in, you know, before long. And so I've just kind of been leaving this running quite a bit. So anyways, anyways, oh, I need to put the support, right? Yeah, I'll do that later. It's, this is kind of a hub jub mess at the moment, as you can tell, but I'm working on it. So, um, And then in addition, um, another thing I did is I knocked out a couple quests here. Nothing too crazy. First up, this right here. We never filled a resonant energy cell frame because we had no use for it. Um, if you recall, we were making these because we use these. We have these automated. We did not have this automated because the only use for it is making the energy cells. And they have no use you know, so I did go ahead and fill one, and I went ahead and upgraded to an energy cell, and it's down in the power building. I just plugged it in and let it kind of fill up a buffer, so I have, uh, like, a portable cell. If I happen to need it, there's one already right there, so. Um, but for that, we get two titanium ore, so we'll go ahead and claim that. And then the view cell, I went ahead and just crafted one of these. I don't really have any need for it right now. Um, they are useful to some extent, but I don't have any use for them at the moment. Um, and we're going to get Sonic Glasses for that. And then lastly, the one mil sale. If you recall, we ordered that at the end of last episode. That's long since done. We're going to get 16 dense diamond ore. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And okay, there we go. It's a visual bug. And I'm just going to dump this stuff into there. That will be fine. Okay, so anyways, I am not done building up this node yet. We've got a lot of stuff in it, but I'm not done with it just yet. I want to spend, um, you know, a few more days working on it. And maybe by next episode, we'll say, um, honestly, it's not with, uh, I don't know. It might be next episode. It might be the episode after, um, or maybe even the episode after. I would like to feed it up, and especially with, like, Christmas coming up, I'll have some time where I'm away from the computer quite a bit. So I wouldn't mind postponing it until it gets fed up to a point that I'm happy with. Um, but we'll see. We might go for like 100 in each. That's a 10. Um, it really didn't take very long for air. But the thing is, stuff like Ignis, Aqua, I think, is kind of behind. Um, I think, I can't remember. But I know most of them are around 50 at the moment. So it shouldn't be too bad um, to get it up to 100. Maybe by next episode or the episode after or something like that, depending on how much time I have this running and stuff. Um, so we'll see. We'll kind of play it by ear. It might be next episode. It might be the one after. Or the, I don't know. We'll see. Um, like I said, we're going to we're gonna take some time and do some, um, some other stuff. Take a, a brief break from Thalmcraft. And today I was debating about maybe getting back into finishing out some of the stuff that we were working on with the Between Lands. But I decided there's one thing that I want to do. Okay, um, this stuff is really just a waiting game. That's a little bit later, and this page will be done. Okay, so we're kind of working on that stuff passively. Um, but what I would like to do is I would like to get into gadgets a little bit. This is another page that's quickly getting to completion. A lot of these are farming, not so much, but we should have to get on that. Um, but what I would like to start doing is working our way towards automatic quarrying system. Okay, and that is, of course, this little tab right here, the slaughterhouse. Uh, slime and Beginning Syringe, Pink Slime, Pink Slime Crystals. Okay, and this is actually a fairly easy process when you have spawners. So what we're going to do is, well, the first thing we're going to work towards is the Slaughterhouse. This is actually fairly cheap at this point. Because we've waited a little while to get into it, and Offensa, all that stuff is automated at this point. So, so I'm going to go ahead and order a Machine Block. And then let me get, uh, let me go ahead and order an Offensa. What am I missing? Netherrack, really? Seriously? I'm out of Netherrack. I, th I think I have Netherrack smelting or something. I mean, I think the quarry is running right now. Oh, maybe it finished. 
let me pop down there. Let me change over the quarry and let me stop voiding netherrack um, for right now. I didn't think we would go through all that netherrack so fast. I think it's smelting for... I don't know. I'm not 100% sure where I'm using that much netherrack, but I'm using it somewhere. I think it it's in the Thalmcraft area. Okay, that thing is set, so I'm going to go negative 10, positive 10, and there we go. It's running. So We should start getting netherrack in again. I don't know, like, I'm guessing that it has to be, but I mean, we have tons of netherite, like, tons of it. So I'm surprised that we've already ran through all of that, but maybe, that thing is filling up like crazy fast. So we're up to 8,000 netherite again, because I'm pretty sure I filled out the 1664, I may not have. I may have just gotten a few thousand and then stopped it and started voiding it. I don't, I'm not for sure. So anyways, now we can order Offensa. So we'll go ahead and get that. And then if we take a look at the Slaughterhouse. Um, the Ender. There's one, there's two. Dark Axe. One, two. Then we need Redstone Reception Coils and Blocks of Plastic. So two of those. And then we should be able to get our slaughterhouse, which is great. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got that, the next thing I want to get is I want to get just a couple drums. Uh, two of those is great. And then let's go ahead and get some pressurized fluid conduits so that we can uh, handle the fluid that's going to be coming out of this slaughterhouse. And then that should be most everything. Alright, so what I'm going to do, just for a temporary setup, we're only going to run this thing for a minute and then we're going to be done with it. So, um, it's going to be very, very short-lived. Uh, I'm pull the grinder into there, that's fine. Okay, we're going to put the slaughterhouse right in here. And we'll just turn it around like so. Alright, and then... block that off. Now I may have some mobs spawning in there. I'll take care of those. Um, let's just summon Crimson um, I don't know Crimson Clerics. That's fine. And we'll get those guys spawning and they're going to be going, the slaughterhouse is going to be killing them just like the uh, the grinder was. Actually, before I do that let me turn that off for just a minute. And I'm just going to slip back here because we're going to have some fluids coming out of this. And that's what we want to deal with is the fluids Okay, there is the slaughterhouse. So we're just going to set these drums up. Like one right there. And we'll go ahead and just plug that in. There we go. Okay, so we've got liquid meat coming into this one. And then if we take a look inside this, we've got... Okay, we don't have any pink slime yet. Okay. So I'm just going to run this for just a minute here. Let me turn Crimson Cleric back on. And might as well turn on Crimson Knight too. And we have, so that's fine as well. Just so we get more stuff spawning and the slaughterhouse can keep working non-stop. Okay. Now let's see. Do we have any pink slime yet? Because I want to get my drum set before I let this run for a minute. Uh, we still don't have any pink slime. Okay. I think it can come from hostile mobs. Normally I do passive mobs. Normally I have passive mob farms. Um, so I tend to do passive mobs. But I actually don't have any passive mob spawners. So if we can avoid having to make one, you know, just for this purpose, we're going to try to avoid it. So, Oh, you know what? There is pink slime. It's in the tube right now. Okay. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, see, there's pink slime in that little tube there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this drum down right there. We'll put this down, and we'll just connect that up. Okay, so we've already got 560 millibuckets of pink slime. That's great, because we only need enough for a bucket is all that we need. Okay, so let's turn this back on. Let these guys spawn up a little bit. And honestly, it shouldn't take too many more spawns. Okay, there's 960 millibuckets. This isn't taking long at all with our current setup. We've got what we need now. So I'm going to shut all these off. Because we don't really need those. 
And let me kill these little rogue spawns that kind of got out. Okay, and I got our grinder and stuff back. Um, so let's go ahead and pull up our slaughterhouse. We don't really need that anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up these tubes. Um, I think there's one right in there. Let's see. Put the grinder back right there. Oh, let's see, which way is this facing? Okay, I'm going to have to rotate this back real quick. There we go, everything's fixed now. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab our drums. I don't really need these anymore. I don't think I'm going to be farming for pink slime unless it's needed, which it's possible it'll be needed later. Um, but at least for right now, we don't need it. And let me get some dirt so I can fill this stuff in. Okay, and you know, we actually don't really need this ender pouch anymore. We can use it for something else since we have... Well, I'll need it if I'm in another dimension, I guess. Um, so anyways, let's change back over. And we've got our drum of pink slime. Okay, so, and by the way, we should have a quest complete, right? Slaughterhouse, that's done. We get two reinforced slides. Okay, so the next thing they want us to make is the slime and beginning syringe. Um, that is not terrible to make. We're going to go ahead and make that before we spawn any slimes. Um, just so that we can go ahead and embiggen it. So, slime embiggening syringe. And I'll be honest with you, in the past I haven't actually really used this thing. I think this is like one of my, I think I've used it once before. I don't generally use it. Um, I totally forget that it's even here because generally what I do, most packs, this pack, the Ender IO spawners aren't terribly expensive, but normally I just pop it in an Ender IO spawner and there we go. But um, we're going to go ahead and do it this route. And this route actually is pretty good. Um, we're going to get a Slimalyzer, which is good for finding slime chunks, um, which we don't really need that, I don't think. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, let's go ahead and pop that in there, and the meat drum, I'll just, I'll just put this down in here for right now, for right now. Um, so what we're going to do, let's get ourselves a reusable safari net. There we go. And then what we're going to do, let me get a bucket. I actually don't have any more buckets on me at the moment. Grab one of these, and let's pop down, um, I'll just pop right down here. I see a good little spot to do this. Okay, so we'll put that down, we'll put our bucket, or we'll grab a bucket of this pink slime, we'll just dump it right into there. Now, in a minute, it's going to take a little bit. Sometimes it takes a while, but this will eventually become a slime. There we go. Okay, so let's grab this little guy. We're going to move him right up here. And let's get our slime embiggening syringe. And what we're going to do is we're just going to right click him with the slime embiggening syringe. And there we go. He's a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to go ahead and bump him up. I think, let me see what the what the quest book says. But I believe, um, yeah, don't grow up past the third biggest form or else it will explode. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to get one more slime and beginning syringe. We're going to go ahead and bump it up to the third level. And then, I'll show you what we're going to do. Um, now, technically, you could just keep, you know, get a big one and then break them down to the smaller versions. And then do that again and again and again and again and just keep farming off the same one. We're actually just going to throw this in a spawner. Okay, so we've got a large pink slime. And we'll just pop over here, and it's starting to become night, so I'll, we'll go over there and check out uh, the bridge. But what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and open this up. Let's grab our Twilight Archer out of there. We'll put in Pink Slime, and we're going to say Spawn Exact Copy, yes. Okay, just so we make sure and have the large ones. Now, technically, we don't have to Spawn Exact Copy, but our essence really isn't an issue at this point, so I don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and dump this stuff into there. I'm going to dump that. There we go. We got a slime. And it's killing him. I saw some pink slime balls go in there. There we go. Yeah, you know what? i tell you what. I'm going to leave this running for a while, so I'm going to say spawn exact copy no. Um, it's a bit faster as far as the speed that it runs, and it uses less essence. If I leave that running, um, essence really isn't a problem 
too much. But if I leave that running with a spawn with a spawn exact copy for a while, it could quickly become an issue. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so pink slime we have. Do not have any really? Oh, you know what? I don't know what it is. All my mob items. Um, it's this one over here, isn't it? There we go. Pink slime balls. <clears throat> we need to put these into a drawer. Because that's plugged up to only allow things that are in drawers uh, to pass through there. So we'll just pop downstairs. Let's see. We'll just pop it into here. That's fine. Okay, so pink slime balls. We have 15... And there may be some more that come in in just a second. Okay, so we've got 15 pink slime balls. And that should complete a quest. We're going to get a reusable safari net. Then they want us to make pink slime crystals. Okay, this is just pink slime blocks. Nine of those makes a pink slime crystal. Okay, so not very difficult to do. Um, I am going to go ahead and automate this process. Just really, really quickly. So we're going to say that if you take pink slime. And you do just like that. That's going to get you a block of pink slime. And then if you smelt it, then that's going to give you the crystal. And I actually forgot to do it. I got to wait till we get a little bit more pink slime, but that's fine. So, okay, they want us to get 10 crystals for this. What all are these used for? Uh, glued clusters, which is going to be crystal clusters. That's pretty far into the game. And then the laser drill precharger, which is what I'm after right now. So I'm going to let that run for just a bit. And I'll finish up the recipe for that. And let us get a little bit of pink slime built up. Because um, we're going to need that to move on with what we're working on. Okay, we've got a bunch of pink slime now. Now, I don't actually have any slots in the furnaces. And I've got to add more to that. That's fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just make these manual for right now um, and then because we're not going to need any more of these for a good long while so I'm just going to go ahead and do these manual and then later on we'll add in more slots for the furnace and probably automate them potentially if we find that we need those uh, whatever it was cluster things if we find that we need those a lot um, but for the pink slime right now we don't have much use outside of just this one initial project I am going to leave the pink slime spawner running for a little bit longer, and that's simply due to the fact that I may want to add more than just, have more than just two of these, okay? So anyways, there is our 10 pink slime crystals, and we're going to get 10 blocks of Eulorium. So the quest line here is done. It doesn't have anything else for us, but we're not done. Um, because getting these pink slime crystals is all well and good, but we want to put these to use now. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making laser drills. Um, and I'm hoping, let me actually look. I don't think we're going to run into the same issue that Project Ozone had. No, not at all. Project Ozone, a lot of the uh, laser focuses weren't craftable. It was a major, major downside to Project Ozone um, to me because it was like recipe changes to where it wasn't really thought out. So a lot of the stuff wasn't even craftable. But um, we are going to need a bunch of glowstone illuminators. And from what I can tell, these can only be made in the casting basin, which is kind of icky. So <laughs> let's get ourselves some Lumion glass. Let's get, uh, uh, we'll go ahead and order like 40 of that. And then I'm also going to want uh, Signalum. What is this? Blocks of quartz. That's fine. Okay, so all together, we are going to need four prechargers. I mean, eight prechargers. Then we're going to need... Uh, two laser drills those take two glowstone illuminators each so we're gonna need what 12 in total all right so glowstone illuminator and then illuminator frames let's go ahead and just grab 12 of those okay and then let's go ahead and get ourselves just a bit of glowstone and i'm just going to do this manual i think what all uses do we have for this i could have swore we made these before but Maybe not. Looks like mainly just laser drill prechargers is about it. So yeah, we're just going to make these manual. So that is not an issue. So we'll go ahead and dump in. Um, how much do these even take? A uh, thousand millibuckets. 
And how much does each block make? Each block makes a thousand mill buckets. Okay, that works out well. So we'll just throw 12 of those in there. And it looks like it's going to take a minute. So while that's melting, actually, let's... Uh, oh, you know what? It's nighttime. Let's pop over to the bridge. Because I meant to show you um, what the bridge looks like at night. So that's what it looks like. So you can see it's well lit up. Um, you got a couple of little dark spots up there. I may fix that or I may leave it. I don't know. Um, it's illuminated enough um, to where I'm pretty happy with it. Because we're not running any kind of night vision or anything like that. So that's what the bridge looks like at night. So I actually quite like that. I may add some illumination down the sides right through there. I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure if I want to or not. So that's why I did all those little lights through there. Because I think they look good on the bridge. And they add that illumination that I wanted on the bridge. So, um, anyways, while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's see, laser drills. Uh, we're going to need a little bit of diamond lattice, some factory machine blocks for each of these. So let me go ahead and get the factory machine blocks ordered. We're going to need altogether 10 of these. All right, so that is running. What's it? Okay, it's crafting blank slates. Um, and then we're going to need some octatic capacitors. Let's go ahead and just order 10 of those. That'll be fine. I know we're going to need those. And then diamond lattice. We are going to need a little bit of that. So I'm going to go ahead and order, um, I think it was two for each. I don't know. I'm going to order four. Once we get the glowstone illuminators, we'll focus that the rest of that stuff down. Oh my gosh, this stuff takes forever to melt down. It takes a very, very long time. I need to see if there's... If the other fuel types, like in Project Ozone, how there was the faster fuels, I need to see if there's anything like that for this pack, perhaps. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I don't use the smeltery a whole lot. We're using it right now for these. But, um, and you know, it may also possibly be, well, that one has the fluid transposer recipe. So maybe the glowstone illuminators are always that way. I know before we had that issue with the test racks. Um, I actually had it a couple times where I had to reload that. But um, Okay, so laser drills. Yeah, I think right here we're mainly waiting on the glowstone illuminators. And then the pre-chargers are each going to take hardened aluminum, aluminum. But I have 17. We're going to need... What, 16, so that's not too bad. Um, plastic. Go ahead and give me, like, I don't know, 40 of that. That's fine. Okay. So, yeah, we're just waiting on the glowstone illuminators is all that we're waiting on at the moment. So, I will be back once that stuff is done. Because this stuff is taking a very, very long time to melt down. So, I'll be back in just a bit. Okay, the smeltery will not cook it. It won't go over, like, half... Um, the smelting for the glowstone so I think it's because the melting point on that is 3000 degrees Celsius like normal ore is like 600 so I think it's not getting hot enough so what we're gonna do just to make this a bit easier is like right here's our glowstone so let's get this we'll throw it in oh think about that let me uh, see, let me get buckets I'll go ahead and get like 12 buckets all together We'll just throw these in here and just get it to make our buckets for us. And we'll just do this through that method to get our energized glowstone. Then we're going to pump it into the smeltery and problem solved. So, energized glowstone buckets. Whoops. There we go. And we'll just dump it all into there. Okay. So there's 12 buckets of energized glowstone in our drum. And then let me get um, just some pressurized fluid conduits. That's fine. And we'll go knock this out real quick. I waited for a while just to see if it would go above it, but it doesn't. I think lava is maybe only in 1,500 degrees or something. I'm not for sure, but this is fine. So we'll just set that right there. We'll put a pipe uh, connecting over. And we're going to say extract. Always active. And... There we go. Energized glowstone's coming into here, and then we can just take and dump that into there. So now I have to go through and 
fill all these with energized glowstone now. So that's going to be fun. I mean, I could set up a little pipe system that keeps this filled with uh, illuminator frames and, you know, keeps this pouring, but might as well just stand here and do 12 of these things. So I'll be back in just a minute once this is done. Okay, so we've got our 12 glowstone illuminators now. Um, it actually took a little while, but I was just kind of editing footage while I did it, so it's not really a big deal. Um, and then let's pop up here. And one thing I am going to do pretty soon, because I know I actually had a comment about this, and it's one thing I've been meaning to do, is put a roof on this building. <laughs> so, I will start working on that, you know, here pretty soon. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get ourselves two laser drills. And then I'm also going to want laser drill pre-chargers. And I'm going to want four of these per laser drill. What am I missing? Oh, octanic capacitor. Go ahead and make me 20 more of these. So anyways, I'm going to want four of these per laser drill. So all together we are going to need eight of them. There we go. And that's it. That's what we need. And then I'm also going to want to get myself a Tesseract. So let's order one of these guys. And while that's running, I've got one on me I can use technically. Um, this Tesseract here. Uh, Corey, that'll work. That's the line that we want to use for this. So let's see. That one is done. Let's go ahead and grab that one. And let's see, I'm also going to want some conduits, some energy conduits, and should be it. Should be everything that we're going to need. Okay, so let's pop down here, and I actually want to set these up. Um, it's going to be off in these directions, actually. I've got this stone here, but we're going to actually pull up a little bit of this. So let's go ahead and just kind of burrow into here. And kind of what I'm thinking is we're going to have a little quarry area. And these are automatic. They mine from the void. So we don't ever have to move them. You know, I've got other quarries that are much faster than these are. But the thing is, I would like to get some kind of an automatic quarry. Um, I've got my Madoc. I don't know why I'm... Don't ask me. Don't ask me why I'm doing that. Because I have no clue. Um, but you know, we've got our automatic quarries, which are, they're great. I mean, our, uh, our faster ones, you know, they mine really quickly. They're very, very powerful, but this one has the added benefit of not having to be moved. Um, and of course in 1.7, we don't have, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of it, but there's better quarries once you get into like 1.10 stuff, but we don't have them in here. We've got, uh, of course there's like the extra utilities, quarry and, and the uh, one from oh I can't remember it it's like one of the best tech mods ever made but I, I, I'm, I haven't, I'm drawing a mind blank right now so anyways um, so what we're going to do we're going to set this laser drill up and let's see we're going to have our precharger setting let's see this is going to be basically a 3x3 three three area that's going to need so let's see do I want it right there or do I want to bring it? I think I want to bring it back. Um, we'll go back another, like, two. And, of course, I'll build this room out and stuff later. That's that's fine. Because this is one area that I want to work on a bit is the mine area. Especially, like, the mine entrance more than anything. Um, and then we're going to have these little laser drill rooms off on each side. Yeah. Let's see, that should be good for what I want. Okay, so we're going to have a laser drill precharger setting right here. Um, oh, no, it's going to be a 5x5, isn't it? It's not going to be a 3x3. Three three. Okay, let's actually break this out. A couple more here. Let's do like that, actually. That's fine. We have plenty of room. Okay, so laser drill precharger right there. We'll have one right there, right there, and then one right here. Okay, so our laser drill is going to go right here in the middle, right in this little spot here. And basically you have a precharger, um, air block, and then your drill. You know, a precharger has to be on each side. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we are going to mine down. One downside to that Maddox is it doesn't dig through gravel very quickly. It digs through dirt great, but gravel it does not dig very fast at all. I'm not too worried about it because I don't do a whole lot of manual digging. Um, well, actually, I kind of do <laughs> when I'm clearing stuff out and everything I do, but that's fine. And I know I'm digging straight down. It's a big no-no, but 
we're kind of at the point now where it doesn't really matter. If there's lava, I'll just fly out of it. It's not really a big deal. All right, and basically we're digging all the way down until we hit bedrock. Okay, so we finally hit bedrock, and so then we'll just fly out. That's all we had to do. So just a straight line, straight down from the laser drill, all the way down to bedrock. And I would advise that you set this up after you dig your hole. Otherwise, it's going to damage you. Or at least leave like a block, maybe like a block here, and then kind of burrow your way out or something. Just don't don't get caught down there <laughs> whenever you go to start it up. Okay, so we'll drop down our laser drill, and then we'll go ahead and remove this block. And then we go ahead and pull these up, and then we'll replace them. Oh, no. Maybe they weren't pulsing just because they didn't have any energy. That's fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our Tesseract, and we're going to set this up right here. We're going to say quarry line. There we go. We're going to say that you can send items you can we're going to block fluid and you're going to receive energy okay so this is going to be able to send our items to that chest like our other quarries are set up the same way you know they're sending to that one chest this is going to send into those same chests and then what we'll do is we'll just have some energy conduits come out and we'll just plug these up to each of our prechargers And go. Oh, okay. Yeah, these do need to be rotated. You can see that green side is the side that needs to be facing in. So we'll just rotate that. Rotate that. Rotate that. I thought normally they faced in automatically, but they weren't wanting to. Okay, so what's going to happen is this is going to pulse a beam that goes all the way down to bedrock. And if you touch this beam, you take damage. If you touch these beams, you take damage. So don't touch those beams. Um, and this, the laser drills, you can actually use these for, uh, wither killing. Laser drills are actually pretty effective for killing withers. Um, there's better alternatives, of course, but if you're strapped for alternatives, they can be used. All right, so what that's going to do is it's going to pull in random materials. And actually, I think with our setup, it's going to be kind of hard to see, um, those materials coming in. I imagine if we watch it, we might see... Something that comes in that's maybe not nether materials. Like, okay, there was titanium. For a split second, there was titanium. Um, and so what it's going to do is it's going to pull in those materials. just And it, it's going to be pretty much any ore, unless it's been blacklisted, pretty much any ore that's in the game. Okay? Um, so there's a huge variety of things that it can pull up. Um, and the spread is quite huge um, when it comes to... You know, if you don't put lenses on this and you're trying to mine for a certain thing... It might take a little while before you get what you're after, which we'll get into lenses in just a moment. So, but I'm going to go ahead and set this other one up first before we get into lenses. Um, just because I would like to have this one running as well. This one was a whole lot easier to clear out for. Okay, so once again, laser drill, pre-chargers, down like that. And then I've got to dig down to bedrock once again. And actually, I'm going to need another Tesseract. So let me go ahead and order one of those. I love that thing. Like, I can't manually craft in it, and I can't do recipes and all that stuff with that one. Eventually, we'll be able to have one that we can craft in. It has a crafting grid. Um, still can't do patterns, but that's fine. That's not really a big issue. Um, but it does make life a whole lot easier, being able to request things without having to go back to a uh, terminal. Something I'd been meaning to do for a while, just hadn't got around to it quite yet. Okay, so all the way back down to bedrock again. And I actually got kind of lucky. I didn't hit any, like, tunnel systems or any lava or water or anything. Like, it was pretty much just a straight dig both times. So, it does take a little while when you're in a mountain, though. <laughs> when you're at, like, Y1, almost 130, uh, to dig all the way down there. Okay, so let's... Uh, Set up this laser drill. There we go. Yeah, see, they do a mint without power. Maybe it's just... Mine wasn't because I didn't have them rotated properly. Alright, so there's our Tesseract. And we'll just take this one and set it up the exact same way. Quarry. Um, send items. 
block fluid, receive energy, and your power goes into the prechargers, not into the laser drill. Um, you'll notice the prechargers have an RF capacity on there. Uh, the laser drill does not. Basically, it just accepts the items, and it takes the items and it pumps it out into the top. Okay, above it is where it prioritizes its items. Because, of course, all these faces are covered, the bottom's covered, you're going to have to pump out the top. Um, but you pump the energy into the prechargers. Um, I quite like this setup. I might end up maybe doing some kind of other conduit that looks a little bit better or um, doing something, but that works for now. You know, I could pump it into the ceiling and bring it around, but this works fine. Okay, so both of those are running. And then what we can do, um, you know, like I said, right now it's just mining for pretty much any ore equally. So it's going to have, say there was 10 different ores that it was mining. It's, I think it's probably more than that because uh, one thing to note is it doesn't ore dictionary. So if you have, for example, um, once again, unless they're blacklisted, but, you know, for example, uh, copper ore. If you take a look, we have three different copper ores. It could pull up any of these three copper ores. Um, but just for example's sake, say you have 10 different ores. Well... Um, I think each ore may have a different rarity or something like that. But anyways, every time that it mines, it has a chance to pull up any ore um, in the game that's not blacklisted. Okay. So, for example, like with Project Ozone, you could get like cheese ore and stuff from Galacticraft. Um, you know, there's a huge different spread there. They're, like, there's sulfur ore from the between, the between lands. Um, you know, it's pulling up. A lot of these ores may not even be in our ore processing system. So I'll have to put those, I'll have to add those in. Um, there's steel ore, man infused. Yeah, it's like all over the place right now. So that's fine. Um, I'm going to let it run for a while and let it build up and kind of see what we get. But what we're going to do is we are going to add a lens to this. And lenses, um, these are quite handy. Um, no, it's not, uh, it's not a lens. It's a laser focus. <laughs> okay, I'm losing my mind. Um, so you have these different laser focuses, and they're not very expensive. Gold nuggets, um, some stained glass of the appropriate color, um, which we're going to have to make ceramic dyes, I think. That's fine. Um, and then we're going to need some emeralds, which woo. <laughs> um, but we can actually hit you on these and look, and you can see whenever you have a focus in your laser drill, it's going to increase the chance that it focuses on certain types of ore. So, for example, white is nether salt, nether quartz, aluminum, nether salt, peter, and iridium. Uh, if we take a look at orange, that's going to be your coppers, um, amber bearing stones, and ardite. Uh, magenta actually has no uses, so there's not really much use in using magenta. Um, that's basically there for completion sake, so you have all the colors, and then some modded ores can use that. Uh, light blue is diamonds um, and shiny. Um, yellow is yellow right, glowstone, nether gold, um, sulfur, that kind of stuff. Um, you got lime, that's emerald, and uranium. Uh, pink has no use. Gray is steel, pig iron, silver. Um, light gray is tin, and ferrous. Cyan is certus. Okay, that's the one I would actually like to have. Um, because I tend to run the nether... Mining, now we do have the, the mining set up in the deep dark, but I tend to be using the nether one, I've noticed more. It, it Even though the deep dark has a lot of ores in it, I tend to get a lot of stuff. Um, I use a lot of glowstone, uh, nether quartz, stuff like that, so I like mining the nether, and I tend to pop in there more and reset that mining um, than I do the deep dark. And so I have had some situations where I suffer with Sardis, so I would like to get Sardis, um, you know, coming in a bit more. Um, I also wouldn't mind having Diamond. So what we're probably going to do is do one that specializes in Diamond, one that specializes in Sardis. Okay, now if you take a look, let's actually pop down here before I start making lenses. Because I can't, I can't remember myself if it's four or five um, is the max. But if you take a look in here, oh, it's six. You can put up to six lenses in this. And you can see right now it's building up work, and once that work fills up, it just got an ore, okay? So every time that work fills up to 300, it makes an ore. And there's no chance for failure or anything like that. Every time it fills up that work, you get an ore. 
it's actually pretty nice having this as like passive mining um, and not having to to run that like have to move it or anything like that all right so what do we need light blue and cyan okay those are the two colors that we would like to have so laser focus and uh, we'll start with the light blue we're gonna have to make some of this light blue ceramic dye that's just clay and light blue dye no biggie um, can I not use uh... actually I probably don't have any go ahead and give me a bit of that and give me some ceramic dye I'll go ahead and make 16 while I'm in here and then cyan um, We'll go ahead and order a little bit of that, and we're going to want um, cyan ceramic dye. There we go. Okay, so then our stained glass, and I've got to find the Mine Factory Reloaded stained glass. There we go. And I'm going to want cyan, six pieces, and then we can make our cyan panes, and then we'll want the light blue and there we go okay these really aren't expensive in the least so you might as well go ahead and make your focuses and I want there's one two three four five six now you can mix and match these if you so desire so you can have like a few different colors of lenses in there um, or you can do it all of one color it's really just up to you I tend to do all of one color and have focused, like dedicated miners, but you can mix and match. Um, you know, I could do, say, three cyan and three light blue in each one. Um, and I think it would, I, I believe it would come out to be about the same, but uh, it's really just preference, I guess. I don't believe that there's any, you know, any loss over using multiple lenses. You'll notice that each of these, if you have, like, say, a, a light blue laser focus, 2.39% um, chance to get diamond ore and that's going to stack and make your percent higher and I believe with with six of these you're going to be running in like I don't know around 12% or something like that um, it is quite a bit better and we'll be, to get, be getting more shiny coming in from that as well which is always good so let's go ahead and throw in our light blue laser focuses and then we'll come over here and we'll throw in our cyan laser focuses and let's pop up here. Now, cyan, of course, is only for Sirtis. That's all it returns. And then the light blue is for diamond and shiny. So let's look in the chest now and see if we're getting maybe more of those coming in. I uh, just saw some diamond right there for a split second. And the only, the only miner I have running right now is the nether one. So anything that's coming in that's not nether materials is from our uh, lasers. So, And we should be just about to get one there. Some coal... And there's some ferrous. Um, now bear in mind that these can net you nether uh, materials as well. So some of the nether stuff I just saw, I think it was peridot or emerald, one or the other. Um, but some of there's copper. Some of the stuff that could, that can be coming in from the lasers could be nether materials. Um, that's a possibility as well. So, um, But I'm going to let that run for a while and kind of see what all materials. I mean, right now it's only... Nether salt ore is not really going anywhere. Man infused, um, sulfur, and steel. And then I need to do something with these. Okay, so we'll let that run for a while. We'll see what kind of materials we get coming in and everything. Okay, I left that running while I was editing footage. So an hour and a half or so. Um, the footage thus far is about 48 minutes in. Um, so this is what we've gotten so far that's not being auto-processed. That's nether salt, mana infused ore, sulfur ore, steel ore, emerald ore, nether quartz ore, shiny, amber bearing stone, and nether uranium. Um, now bear in mind, I don't think nether uranium actually spawns in this pack. I think it's disabled. Stuff that's disabled can still come up in these. Um, that's, you know, that's disabled for world gen. Now if an ore is actually disabled, disabled... Um, like in the void mining and in the world gen. And you're, of course, you're not going to see it then. But um, anyways, so that's what we've gotten so far. I'll add that stuff in a little bit later. I'm going to let it run for a little bit longer and see if there's anything else because I'd like to make sure we've got the full spread and then I can go in there and just put everything in. Um, 
which I'm not going to do that on a camera. We've we've added ores into our ore processing system enough times. I think you guys got it. Um, so anyways, that is set up. Um, really, all I have to do is kind of clean up that area, maybe refine it a little bit, clean up the cabling, um, and I can actually start working on this mine section and kind of building this out somewhat. Um, now, we will probably maybe end up having another two laser drill setups, maybe even more, we'll see. Um, in the future, possibly, maybe. <laughs> Not 100% sure, but um, it is a possibility. So, we shall see. Um, and I don't think there's anything in the quest book that we've completed. And I think it looks like the main thing that's left for us in gadgets is um, these additional shape cards for fortune and silk quarries, and then the etheric sword line, where we get the soul fragments, uh, make the watering can. Now, technically, we could make the etheric sword... You know what, we might as well go ahead and just knock that quest out. I don't think we're going to use the etheric sword because you use it and it cuts down your maximum health. Not something I really want to do right this second, but in the future we will. Um, so let's go ahead and get ourselves just a couple diamonds. And actually, we've got stable, unstable ingots right here, but I'm going to go ahead and just do it with the unstable just because we've got 156,000 obsidian right now. Four right now. We need to get that farm set up for obsidian. Um, you know, we've got the seeds. Yeah, we've got the seeds. No. We haven't made obsidian seeds yet, have we? I don't think we have. Um, we might get into that next episode. We'll see. If we don't get into Thaumcraft. It all depends on if we get into Thaumcraft or not. So, we shall see. Alright, this craft I'm not too worried about. There we go. Etheric Sword, and that quest is completed. We get an Obsidian Chisel. Um, what's the damage? Seven damage. Okay. I know the book said it doesn't have a durability, so it's good for um, an auto farm, autonomous activator type setup. But we have stuff without durability with more melee, so we're not going to worry about that. But at least that's done. I mean, it'll be a little while before we use it, because I don't think we use Soul Fragments. Um, reinforced watering can, and then we're going to use them for infinity ingots. And then Eldritch Blood Orbs. Okay. And that's it. But there is a way, like right here, you can craft it. Green Heart Canisters and Warm Blood. So, and that's Yellow Heart Canisters and Neutronium. Okay. That's, that's a bit later into the pack, I'd say. Um, so I'm not going to worry about those right now. I'm not going to worry about them at the moment. Um... But anyways, I'm going to, I think basically in this episode out here, I know it's a little bit short, but I do have some stuff to go over. Um, I know the episode will end up being a little bit short, but we don't really have any time to get into anything and for me to cover um, the world download info um, before we end up the episode. Because I want to address a couple uh, things. I tend to have these as questions in a lot of the world uploads and a lot of questions relating to world uploads. Um, first up, I am going to, and this isn't really a, I don't think a commonly asked question, but right here, uh, from inventory, this chest right here, this is where I'm going to put my inventory, as it has been, I think, with every other world upload. So my inventory will be dumped into here. I may let the quarries run a little bit before I do the world upload, we'll see, like while I'm editing and doing some other stuff, but anyways, uh, a couple questions that I tend to have a lot. Um, regarding world uploads. First up, I will include a link in the description for all added mods to the pack, because I do have things like Lycanites, I have Deco Craft and all that stuff, um, Melissa's Doors, and I don't know. I'll put all the, the links down below um, for all the stuff that is added to the pack in this version. So, like, an up-to-date list there. And also, I get this question a lot... I have not done anything special to the mods to get them to work with the pack. Basically, I was able to just take the mods that I have, and I was able to just throw them in the pack, and they worked. Um, if you're having issues regarding those mods, I know I've had questions about um, a few mods. Make sure that you get the parent files for those mods when you go to download it. Because there's a couple of them, and there will be links in the description that, that if you read the, the description, it says, make sure and get, you know, I've got it, I've got it all listed in there, make sure and get this file and this file, or I'll have a link to both the different files if they're in different locations. 
but if the mod has a parent file, um, like a master file, make sure you get that as well. Um, I believe Statues mod does, and I think there's another one, I think maybe Melissa's Doors, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, if you're having issues with getting those to work in the pack, make sure that you get those master files. So, all the links will be down in the descriptions, um, but I haven't done anything, I didn't have to tweak the mods or tweak the pack or anything like that to get the mods to work with the pack. So if you're having issues, um, then it's maybe something else. It could be, um, I know DecoCraft is pretty heavy on the PC, so if you're having issues, it could be related to that. Um, if your computer's, uh, you know, on the weaker side or something like that, it could be related to that. So just a heads up. Um, but yeah, I tend to get a question um, generally after each world upload as to, you know, if I did anything special. I did not do anything special. It's just... Out of the package, here's the mods pretty much. I did tweak Lycanites, but that didn't have anything to do with it running. That was post starting up the pack. You know, I made some tweaks and stuff. I turned off the, you know, recently I turned off the uh, invasions because they kind of got to where they were a little bit annoying. Just some small little tweaking like that, but it's nothing related to running the mod or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, so the world download will be down in the description. So feel free to get that. And, of course, if you guys have any questions or anything, do let me know, and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. Um, the next speed build, I've been meaning to get working on a speed build, um, but then I keep working on bridges and things like that that aren't really something that we speed build. So, um, the next speed build will be sometime in the near future. Um, I'm just kind of working on some other little projects in the time that I would normally be doing speed build work. Um, but the next speed build will be more Thomcraft probably, or Witchery, or I don't know. It's going to be one of our projects that we're working on, or the Between Lands. We'll see. Because um, I do want to get back in the Between Lands because I actually missed that build that we were working on, kind of the ruined um, castle and stuff like that. So um, Next episode, like I said, we might be working on Thomcraft if our node is ready. If the node is ready to go, then we'll work on Thomcraft. If it's not then we are either going to be working... Honestly, we might work on a combination of two things that I want to do. And that is I want to automate soul binders um, and soul, like getting ender souls and stuff like that automatically. I would like to get that automated because that's going to open up... Uh, you know, anything that, re that relates to souls is going to open up that automation, which would be nice. So we'll probably work on that and then also setting up some auto farming type stuff uh, with the future in mind, um, like obsidian seeds. You know, I'm not planning on doing a lot of magical crops in this pack, but obsidian is one of those things that I'm planning on automating. Also these, like right here, air, because we have to have um, the elemental seeds, the air, water, and... Um, and we'll probably set up the manicio seeds because we really need to start working on... We can't really do the mass of ECO. That's one thing I kind of wish the uh, the infusion stones. We can't get the master infusion stone until we get to this point, which is really late in the game. Um, extreme infusion stone is Icorium. We're not too far from that. Strong infusion stone, of course, we can pull this off already. Um, I kind of wish this wasn't this way. <laughs> Um, that is one thing I wish it was more like the Project Ozone. Um, because Project Ozone, all the stones had infinite durability once you got them. Um, in this pack, sadly, they do not. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to set up Manesio farming and just store all the Manesio in deep storage because it's not realistic because you can't automate QED. You cannot automate it. Um, we can't really automate combining down the... Manicio until we get the Master Infusion Stone. So we can't really start compacting it into Zavicio until we get to that point. Um, which is rather late in the game um, because of these Awakened Cores more than anything. Um, because they take the Wyvern Cores, Draconic Cores, and then that right there you need basically Lamb Crystals. That's from Cooked Lamb Chops. Raw Lamb Chops, you have to become Werewolf. Um, from Witchery, you have to get um, into Vithia. Critter Snares from Witchery, Necromantic Shards, Cobaldite. I mean, this is very late game. This is like after you've pretty much mastered the magics, then you can make uh, Draconic Cores. So, 
what we're going to do is we're just going to store each deep storage can store like what 2 billion I think um, it's actually a little bit over 2 billion we'll just start storing Manicio into deep storage and then once we eventually get the master ritual stone um, or master infusion stone then we can start compacting that down and compacting it into Zavisio which is going to take I'm sure by that point it's going to take days of letting it run um, before everything's compacted because we do need a lot of Zavisio late game because you have to do Zivuno and then you turn that into uh, Zivuduo and Zivatrio, Zivaquadro and so on all the way down this line until you get uh, Zivideco. So um, that's going to take a long time to compact all that since we're not going to be able to compact it on the spot and we're going to have to wait until very late game before we can start compacting that. I mean technically now the I guess the extreme infusion stone once we get Icorium we can start doing it um, but there's not really a whole lot of point I don't think to to doing that unless we just have to I mean because we've already got Zavisio we've got almost 5,000 Zavisio essence um, so I mean it's not really unobtainable it's just Manicio farms are not going to be able to do anything with it just yet so Anyways, we'll, we'll probably get into, I got a little bit sidetracked talking about that, but we'll get into, uh, you know, at least start farming up that Benicio Essence and start farming up Obsidian, because both of which we're going to need a lot of um, in the future. So, and maybe get some of those Elemental Seeds. A lot of it I'll do off camera, but we'll kind of go over it on camera. I know Obsidian, I'm going to want uh, uh, Imaginary Time Blocks and stuff like that, but uh, I don't know if we'll start out with Imaginary tom Time Blocks, probably. Because what I'm probably going to want to do is start compacting that obsidian um, and then storing that into deep storage as well. So we'll probably like mass compact it down. It's making this right here, this eternal stone, takes quadruple compressed and massive ACO and subdued spirits. That's used to make plasticine. Plasticine's used to make piles of neutrons. It's very, very expensive. So we're going to need a lot of obsidian lot of air crystals and for that we're going to have to have the air essence um, and then the same over here for earth crystals fire crystals water crystals so we do need to start looking into the future I mean that's a long long ways off but that stuff is ridiculously expensive so we are gonna have to start taking that stuff into consideration start preparing for that because we're kind of at the point where we need to start looking at some of the in-game stuff that we're not gonna be getting into for you know months but we need to start getting that farming up and going so that's what we're going to do um but anyways i'm going to end it out here i hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out and i hope to see you guys next time so until then as always do take care stay safe and i'll see you guys then